William Gargan stars as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. A tempestuous blonde wants a carefree Romeo to slow up and settle down. It isn't always sweet surrender. Not if she emphasizes her demands with hot lead. The National Broadcasting Company presents William Gargan in another transcribed drama of mystery and adventure with America's number one detective, Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Barry Craig speaking. In any national poll where voters were asked to elect the prize chump of 1955, I know one candidate who'd walk away with the title. Mr. Fenley, Bertram Fenley, to give the champion sap of our time his full name. I first met Fenley on the docks, Pier 82. He'd phoned me very hush-hush to please meet him there. I found him on the pier, squatting on two beat-up valises, looking like he'd just come off the banana boat docked right behind him. He had, it turned out. I was on that boat, Mr. Craig, the Hilda May. I was in Honduras. Uh, that's in the Orient. Honduras is in Central America, Mr. Fenley. Oh, yes. Well, I mean Central America. A middle-aged man with fat cheeks and a mild look. So, uh, what's your trouble, Mr. Fenley? Oh, my trouble is just the right word. I don't know how to begin to tell you. Well, there's a coffee pot across the street. Let's talk in there, huh? Over rancid coffee and stale donuts, Fennelly stated his problem. Yes, well, I'll show you all these papers, Mr. Craig. You uh, would like to look them over? The Anzio Calcoon Hotel Land Development Corporation, the big print says. Uh-huh, that's my employer. I was sent overseas to make diagrams of land space for building modern hotels. Well, I see you did a cost analysis. Oh, yes. That one file of papers in your hand represents three months' work. Meaning there are other files of papers? Yes, I've been abroad three times now. I have completed reports on Honduras, Siam, the Belgian Congo, and in a little village called Kuka Sanka. Kuka Sanka? I never heard of it. Well, nobody has. It doesn't appear on the map. It took me 27 days to find it. Kukasanka is mainly 12 straw huts located 270 miles due east of Rangoon. And your company is scouting it as a modern hotel site? Well, that was my understanding. Now, you've been traveling here and there for uh, how long? Eight months. All expenses paid? Yes, my expenses to date have been $7,000. Uh, Why did you contact me to meet you secretly at the dock? Well, in Honduras, I received a telegram. And not to come home, but to proceed on to Borneo. And prepare more papers? Yes. But you hopped aboard a banana boat instead and came home? Yes. You see, I had begun to suspect... Oh, at long last. What else has fired your suspicions? Well, uh, mysterious incidents overseas. Like uh, unexplainable accidents, huh? You almost lost a leg or an arm? Yes, and even my life. Once in a village named Terabumba on the African coast, I was arrested as an enemy spy. Somebody planted documents in your luggage? Yes, and I was thrown into a dungeon without trial. So how come you're here today? The merciful heavens intervened. A tidal wave overran the village. It washed every building off its foundation. And washed you into the open? I fled by ox cart. Enough. I've had it up to my ears. Now, uh, where will you be staying? The Yankee Doodle Hotel on the Lower Bowery. Uh, No one will think to look. Okay, fine. Uh, I'll come see you after I've talked to your so-called employer. Back outside on the dock street, I got a dramatic insight into just how violent incidents kept dogging poor Fennelly's footsteps. Crossing over to my jalopy, a black touring car came straight at us. It had curtains drawn like a hearse. The rest of us, it sang a funeral requiem. Submachine gun. Finally, hit the dirt. 
We lay on the cobblestones, flatter than a couple of deflated pancakes. Sixty seconds after the danger had passed, Fenley was still speechless. I could say it was an attempt on your life, Fenley. I can't see anybody machine gunning the street just to be naughty. However, come on if we're going. The Enzio Calcoon Hotel Land, etc., occupied a six-room suite just off Park Row. Well furnished, but deserted. No sign of business activity. In the last room of the joint, I found a live tenant. A guy in a silk suit with the glue loose on his toupee. It flapped over his brow. He was fast asleep. I gave up the notion of giving him a hot one. I just settled for a shove. Hey, rise and shine. Huh? Huh? Hey, hey, what's the idea? Uh-uh, now put the gun away. Gun? Oh, <laughs> force us. Have it, friend. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, what do you want? Well, I've got a chain of hotels to sell. There's a television set in every broom closet. Oh, you're a comic. Uh, don't, don't audition for me, huh? I don't like funny men. Then suppose I switch professions. How is this impersonation for you? Oh, badge, huh? Well, you won't advance your career here, copper. We got nothing here to interest a private dick. Six rooms and 20 desks. And only one telephone. We've been retrenching. So fire Bertram Fenley, why don't you? Fenley's can't the minute he gets back from the Borneo assignment. But Fenley didn't go to Borneo. No? Hey, we wired him to... Hey, how is it you know all about Fenley to begin with, huh? It happens I'm representing him. Huh? Fenley's here in New York? He is. Well, but that's going against his instructions. You wanted him to keep on wandering. Hey, wandering is his job with Anzio Calcoon. That's why he's on the company tab. To prepare reports on hotel sites, huh? Yeah. Now, where in creation to date has your company built a hotel? One hotel. Hey, now look, guy. We're set up legal. We're incorporated. Read that certificate on the wall. We got stock floating. 300,000 shares at a buck a throw. And that's only the first issue. We got big plans. So wipe that grin off your kisser, huh? Uh, just what are the big plans? Hotels in out-of-the-way places and landing strips to every unit. No competition across the street, like down in Miami. Now, you know our idea. Sounds screwy. What exactly are Fennelly's qualifications for scouting hotel sites for you? Hey, Fennelly was a big hotel keeper. That's why we put him out for us. Fennelly has the experience. And now I want to catch a little snooze, huh? Uh, one more thing. Your name? It's printed on the door. Cupy Marino. <laughs> Cupy. Yeah, my old lady stuck me with the name. At the time, I was too little to argue. Every guy has his racket, but Marino's had me mystified. So far, anyhow. Why anybody would squander seven grand in travel expenses on a screwball like Fenley. The evening papers added to the general confusion. There was a scare headline in it. Rampaging college students tour town firing toy submachine gun. Police threaten harsh measures. <laughs> college pranksters. That could account for what had looked like an attempt on Fenley's life earlier. In the Yankee Doodle Hotel, Fennelly breathed a sigh of relief over the headline. Oh, my. Well, then the shooting wasn't meant for me. Or this could be a mere coincidence. But uh, let's get down to meteor stuff. Yes. You saw Mr. Marino? I did. And your opinion of him? Well, he draws a gun as regularly as ordinary men draw a breath. Mm. Am I then the victim of some hoax? Maybe so. Or maybe just a useful stooge. Traveling about and preparing paper reports so that Anzio Calcoon, uh, etc., can lie about their big plans. A lie to whom? Sucker investors who read their stock investment prospectus. Big talk about their preliminary field operations. Well, that's you, Fenley. Their whole field staff. Oh, I see. Marino said you were a, quote, big hotel keeper, unquote, when he latched onto you. 
Now, how about that? Oh, well, it is a mite uh, exaggerated. So shrink it to size, huh? Well, I ran a rooming house in Buxton Falls. Buxton Falls? Oh, out in Ohio, huh? Yes. Well, how big an operation was it? Come on now, no false modesty. <laughs> Four rumors. Uh, but I served ice cantaloupe for breakfast. Imagine. How did Marino get to know about you in the first place? An ad in the paper or something? No, no. I won a contest here in New York. How come? Well, I'll explain. Oh, I'm dying to hear. At home in Buxton Falls, this was. The telephone rang one night. It was New York, they said. And then somebody asked me something. Could I name ten American presidents? You could, and you did, and you won a prize, the man said. Yes, a weekend in a big New York hotel, tickets to a Broadway show, a case of automobile polish, cufflinks... And stuff. And, yeah, old oh, stuff, and an appearance on the radio. To do what? Uh, uh, recite President James Madison's inauguration speech. Which leads us to Marino. Yes, he telephoned me at the hotel where I was staying. Oh, he'd been much impressed with me on the radio, Mr. Marino said. And as a mighty hotel keeper, plus brain, did you want a job with Anzio, Calcoon, etc.? That's right, and I accepted it once. Oh, you would. Uh, who produced the so-called show that changed the course of your previously humdrum existence? By uh, Mr. Adrian Borislav. Located where? Well, the Advanced Theatrical Enterprises on Broadway, uptown. The Advanced Theatrical Enterprises, huh? What do you bet I find six deserted rooms and a hood snoozing on a sofa? <laughs> My guess on the advanced theatrical enterprises was only partly correct. There were only five offices in this suite, and nobody in them. Hello, anybody? Not even my echo. In the last room of the suite, I found my sleeper. Oh, Nick. No hood this time out. A doll. A pretty face. More rouge than mouth. Three shades of hair and her shoes off. I woke her up gently. <laughs> oh, rise and shine, gorgeous. <laughs> Who are you? Uh, Barry Craig, a detective. And you? Margie. I, I dreamed somebody was... Tickling your feet? Yeah. Uh, I was. With this. My pencil. Oh, I just returned it. Now, a gent named Boroslav. Where do I find him? <laughs> did I just crack a joke? I'll say you did. Well, enlighten me. Who doesn't want to find Adrian Borislov? Oh, is that popular? He's that much of a skunk. You sound like you were left holding a bag. Holding it for $500, 10 weeks' salary. You were Borislov's uh, secretary? I was. Now I'm in here every day for a week, just waiting for that creep to show up. Uh, characterize Adrian Borislov for me. With pleasure. He's a petty promoter, a deadbeat. He bought radio time on small stations just to publicize himself as Mr. Big, to attract attention to himself. He ran cheesy little nothing contests. Mind you, they were all on the level. After all, it only amounted to cheap advertising. Well, what was his real pitch here in the actual offices? Vanity publications for composers and poets, writers, models. He'd skin them, but good. I see. And now Boroslav of Advanced Theatricals has flown the coop. Go look at the unpaid bills on his desk. Deadbeat. My flesh is beginning to crawl, hanging around here. You got any more questions you'd like to ask me? I have. Then do it over a drink. Heavens to Hannah, do I need a drink. When Bright Eyes had lubricated her gullet sufficiently, I got back to the business at hand. Were you with Borislav when a screwball named Bertram Fennelly rode in from Buxton Falls? Popsy? Popsy? Fennelly. My nickname for him was Popsy. Sounds affectionate. Oh, I'm crazy about Popsy. I'm more at home in the company of older men. Well, what's wrong with the younger men? Their conceit. How did you people in advance theatrical get Fennelly's name and phone number to begin with? We're out of the higher telephone directory. We picked ten names from each state and put them all in a goldfish bowl. You know, like a raffle. I see. 
There was nothing ever dishonest about Mr. Borislov's contest. Not the contests. I wonder. You wonder? Say, are you insinuating something? I'll keep it friendly. I'll shut up. Look, be unfriendly. I don't care. You're thinking something. Be a man and come on out with it. You hate me? I practically do already anyhow. So come out with it. All right. I think you were planted in that office, doll, to sell me a line of bull. Account for Borislav and absentia. Call him foul names as you did, but steer me away from looking for him. Why, you cheap Temper, little... temper, temper. <sighs> Your job was also to nicely explain Fennelly's original presence here in New York. But I tell you, Popsy won a contest. Sure, but my guess is the contest was only a device in the first place. A device for what? I'll answer that with a question of my own. What's the tie-up between advanced theatricals and a setup called Anzio Calcoon? No answer, huh? Please, don't you dare pay for my drink. I'll treat myself. Don't think the company hasn't been nauseating. Any blonde with saucer eyes and three lovely shades of hair who can't snare her man is a dead blonde awaiting burial. But Margie was alive and... Fennelly was willing. All of which led to new complications. Well, I've, I, I've come to say uh, goodbye, Mr. Craig. Uh, where are you going? Well, I, oh, frankly, I feel like such a fool. So talk like one. Uh, I'm going to Borneo. After all? Well, I'm afraid my misapprehensions about the Anzio Calcoon Hotel land of... Were all imaginary. Uh, yes. Marino's been in touch with you, huh? Yes, he, he offered me a substantial increase in salary. And you snapped it up. Well, the fact is, I have personal reasons for going abroad this time. It uh, promises to be very enjoyable. <laughs> I can see. You can see? And smell. That cologne on you. Oh, a phantom lover. It's a toilet water. Mm, the axle grease in your hair. The snazzy new suit and the yellow pointed shoes. And that tea rose in your buttonhole. Why, Fennelly, you're a regular Beau Brumel. Oh, well, thank you. And it all spells blonde to me. Margie, huh? Uh, the, the fact is, yes, uh, we're engaged. To be married where? In Borneo. And why in Borneo? Uh, Margie, uh, that's my fiance. is mm. rather incredibly romantic. Yes, I see. She, she wants to be married by a tribal chief. A tribe? Why, how did you guess? Oh, I, I took nine easy lessons in mysticism. Now, how did you fall for it? Well, I'm not sure I shouldn't resent it. Fennelly, how dumb can you be? Can't you see this is only another maneuver to start you traveling? Yes, but why should anyone want me? That's the nub of it. Just why do people look on Bertram Fennelly as a necessary export? Now... Friendly. Uh, yes, Mr. Craig. Call quits on Marino and quit mooning over Margie. Margie's jackassing you. She, or the disappeared Borislav and Marino are all working together. Against you. Uh, against me, but why? But why? And why is what we don't know yet. Go back to your hotel, Fennelly, and stay there. Incommunicado. You're a fish who snaps up at any bait. So don't see or talk to anybody. But I'm not going back to the Yankee Doodle Hotel, Mr. Craig. Why not? Because I'm going home to human Buxton Falls, Mr. Craig. I have absolutely had more than I can stand. But Fennelly didn't make Buxton Falls as it developed. He got as far as Pennsylvania Station, New York then got himself a free ride downtown in the paddy wagon to the tomb, which was where I next found him, in a state of collapse. Oh, for this shameful thing to happen to me. What are you accused of? Theft of a wallet. Did you have the wallet on you? Yes, but... But? But I found it in Pennsylvania Station while waiting for my... It was there. It was right at my feet. Then up came a complainant and a cop. Yes, and? The complainant, a, a Mr. Sampson Maxwell, swore that I, that I had... Picked his pocket. Yes. Sampson Maxwell of the Borislav Marino Margie Combine. 
Fennelly, your middle name is Trouble. Oh, but it's an infamous lie. This tactic of the wallet adds a new wrinkle to the older pattern. Yes, but I don't understand. Up to now, I figured the idea was to keep you out of the country. Knocked off overseas, or failing that. Anyhow, keep you traveling around. Uh, but now... The... Now I figure the idea is to mainly keep you out of Buxton Falls. They keep me from my hometown? Just as they lured you out of it. With that phony contest. Well, no, well I'm confused. I... You were born confused. Forest Love lured you away from Buxton Falls. Then Marino sent you overseas. Now a Maxwell fixed it so you can't get home to Buxton Falls. He thinks. Yes, but what can all this mean? An I... idea is beginning to glimmer in this beautiful head of mine. We'll go into it, Fennelly, when I post bail for you. I posted bail for Fennelly. Fifty bucks, by special courtesy of the DA's office. Then I grabbed Margie from under a hair-drying machine in Madame Zelda's beauty parlor and waltzed her through the streets... At the Times Square out-of-town newsstand, Fennelly joined us, as prearranged, for a look at the front page of the Buxton Falls Bugle. Murder trial nearing close. Why, there's a murder trial going on back home. Defense faces case on alibi for New York mobster Stitch Latimer. Uh, Stitch Latimer. Yeah. Hello? Oh, that's uh, uh, Mr. Craig, what does it say there? Uh, well, the gist of it is... Uh, Stitch Latimer is charged with killing a guard in a factory payroll robbery. Eight months ago, this was, Fennelly. About the time you began traveling. Mm-hmm. Latimer's defense is that it's all mistaken identity. That he never set foot in Buxton Falls in his life. Oh, Fennelly. Uh, yes, yes. Here's an inside picture of Latimer. You ever see him before? Uh, let me see... Ever see? Why, yes, he roomed with me once. Overnight. He he said he was a traveling salesman. Well, there's the why of your travels. You're the only man who can place Latimer in Buxton Falls at the time he was there. Probably casing the job he finally pulled. Oh, and the others? Uh, Marino, Borislov, and Maxwell? Latimer's boys. Trying to get him out from under. By keeping you out of Buxton Falls until the trial is over. Right, Margie? My mouth is sealed. Oh, that's too bad. What's too bad? Talk freely and you could cop a plea. Why take those rosy lips out of circulation for years? How... How bad is it for a girl in jail? No jukeboxes, tall drinks. Who cares? No hair dryers. I can live without. No, uh... Wolf whistles. As bad as that, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. So who do I talk to? Where? You have been listening to William Gargan in another exciting transcribed mystery drama from the adventures of Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Tonight's story, The Moving Target was written by John Robert. Next week, it's the strange story, Hour of Reckoning, about which Barry Craig has this to say. In Hour of Reckoning... A manicurist and a playboy find the rocky road to romance is a dead-end street when a certain ill-wisher contributes a corpse to the bride's trousseau. National Broadcasting Company has just brought you an NBC Radio Network production with William Gargan, starring as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Directed by Andrew C. Love, the cast included Lynn Allen, Howard McNear, and Jerry Hausner.
Join Groucho Marx for You Bet Your Life tonight on the NBC Radio Network.